So I give all praises and glory to the Most High, Ahia, Yasha, Ahia. And we give thanks to the Christ. His name is Yeshaya. And we give thanks to the Holy Spirit, Ruach, for what she does. Holy Spirit is a female entity. Okay? Today we're going to be teaching out of the book of Jasher. Book of Jasher. We're going to be teaching today out of the ancient book of Jubilees. Okay? And of course we're going to be using the King James Version of the Holy Bible. So all praises and glory be to the Most High for preparing this particular lesson on Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Detailed, as all the teachings are, detailed about Abraham, detailed about Isaac, and detailed about Jacob. Okay? So I thank the Most High for that, and I thank the Most High for teachings that are coming up. Okay. Uh, the media services every Saturday at 11. The YouTube channel, which I think total we have like 740 some odd views. So we thank the most high for that. And touching people, a new revelation and services every Saturday. Next time that we're going to go out is going to be on Easter Sunday which is an abomination to the Most High. He doesn't like the Easter holiday. He doesn't care for the Easter holiday. We're going to learn about the Easter holiday on the Sabbath before that, on the 4th. Okay? And then on the 5th, we're going to go out to Pilgrim Rest and try to save some people by the power of the Most High. Upcoming teaching, Pergazites, Amorites, Gergesites, of course, Easter. Egypt, when we were bonded in slavery in Egypt. We're going to talk about that. Joshua and Judges. Somewhere in there, we're probably going to throw in one of the old teachings that I did when I was at the former place. Next week, though, I would highly advise or suggest, that's why I've been walking out here in the neighborhood, to invite people for the 12 tribes and the 12 patriots. Now, I mean, we already have the 12 tribes right here. We have the 12 tribes right here. Okay? But we're going to go and so we're going to go into very much detail. We're going to go into a little detail later on today with a couple of them. But we're going to go into so much detail that without a shadow of a doubt, you're going to know and you're going to be able to minister to people from all 12 of those tribes. And so I give Father with glory and praise for that. We have to know where we come from in order to know where we're going. The Passover is March 28th. That's our next holy day. It's on my birthday. March 28th? Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Nice. So that's the Passover. We only celebrate the holy days that are in the Bible. We don't celebrate the holy day, the holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. Okay, so we give praise to the Most High. Everybody know who that is, right? It's crazy how this is what he said. It's crazy how many black people honor European holidays and clueless to our ancestors' knowledge and stone or pay homage to it. So he kind of had an idea. I believe he kind of knew that he was an Israelite. And of course, before he announced that he was an Israelite, he was killed. They don't, they don't want him to start saying he's an Israelite. They don't want that to come out. He's already, you know, got people following him and all that. He starts saying it. Everybody's saying it. Right. Okay. All right. So today we're going to talk about in the Bible Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We're going to talk about these three, and that's going to lead up to the next week's teaching. Okay. 
very detailed information about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Some of it you probably already know. Some of it you may not know. Okay? But we give Father the glory and the praise. And like I said, we're going to use those three books to show it. Seventy, this is going back to Terah. Terah lived 70 years and he begot Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And that's in Genesis chapter 10, verse 21. Noah begot Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So if you notice in the scriptures, when it talks about Noah's sons, which were, we learned last week, uh, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, in the Bible where it talks about Abraham's brothers, it says Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. And it says that because the Savior, Christ, is going to come out of Shem and Abram's, out of the lineage of Shem and Abram. So that's why their names are always listed first, even though they're not the oldest. Abram was not the oldest of his three brothers. Shem was not the oldest of his three brothers, but they're listed first, because that's where Christ is going to come out of. Okay? Genesis chapter 11, verse 26, go ahead. And Terah lived 70 years and begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. So that's what the Bible says. Okay? Abram, Nahor, and Haran. We're talking about Abram, who is Abraham. Okay? Abram. Abram. <laughs> Exodus chapter 3, verse 6. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of the Most High Almighty, but by thy name, Ahia, was I not known to them. Right. Mm -hmm. So, the Most High did not tell Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob his name. Right? His name wasn't revealed until who? Moses. Moses. His name wasn't revealed until Moses. But by faith, they knew that the Most High was there with them. Okay? They didn't need his name. Like today, we walk up to a person, shake their hand, what's your name? Well, they didn't need his name. Okay? So we're going to talk about the call of Abram, of Abram or Abraham. Everyone in here is from the seed of Abraham. Abraham lived thousands and thousands of years ago, but everybody in here is from the seed of Abraham, not from the seed of Ham. Okay? That's Abraham's name in Hebrew. That's how it looks. Okay, so that's how his name looks in Hebrew. Can you make that out? Maybe we'll get everybody's name together and we'll put it on next week's teaching. See what your name looked like in Hebrew. Okay. I said maybe. With the call of Abram, later named Abraham, the Most High began a people whose descendants are living ethnic purity to this very day. The Most High had promised that he would send a deliverer unto the curse of sin that befell the human race when Adam and Eve sinned in Genesis 3.15. Then Cain killed Abel. The Most High gave them another son named Seth, meaning appointed one. Later on, the Most High would choose Noah as the descendants of all people. Then, of course, the Most High, the Most High flooded the earth because man was being too wicked and vile. Man was being, just doing all kinds of stuff. So the Most High flooded the earth with Noah and his family in the boat, in the ark. Okay? Through Noah and Shem, we become. That's how we came here. Through Noah, then through Shem, which we talked about last week. The Most High promised that he would send a Savior and salvation to man. And we know that Savior is the Christ. Okay? 
from him, from Abram, he was going to make a great nation. And from that great nation, the Messiah would come, which is Yeshua Christ. But also the Most High chose a nation, a witness of the Most High to all of the earth. So out of Abraham, well, I'll get to that in a moment. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 7 and 8. The Most High did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. So the Most High did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number. Read. But because the Most High loved you. Because the Most High loves you. Go ahead. And because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your father. He's going to keep his promises. He's always going to keep his promises. Go ahead. Hath the Most High brought you out with a mighty hand. Right. He did a lot of horrible things to get our people out of Egypt. Go ahead. And redeem you out of the house of bondmen. Mm hmm from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Most High always tells his people, remember when I brought you out of Egypt? These pictures right here depict Egypt. Egypt also in bondage. Egypt also, yes, it means bondage. Okay? So the Most High brought them out of that. Why were they put in there in the first place? Because they were not doing what the Most High said. If the Most High told you, go take out the garbage, and you don't take out the garbage, you're going to get punished. I mean, if your parents, well, if the most I told you, you better do it. But if your parents told you to take out the garbage, and you don't, or wash the dishes, and you don't do it, then there's going to be something that's going to happen. The most I said, I don't want you bowing down to other gods or doing anything like that. <clears throat> Our people started doing it. And that, these posters are the result of that. Call to Abraham, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Most High had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto the land that I will show thee. So the Most High is telling Moses, I mean Moses, the Most High is telling Abram, his name is Abram at this moment, Leave your father's home. I have a better home for you. That's what he's saying. I have something better for you. Get all your people and leave your father's house. Okay? So that's what he's saying. And he's going to give him a land. I'm going to, he's going to give him some land that I'm going to show you, that he's going to show you. With the father, Mo, Abram's father worshipped idols. Okay? And the city was dedicated to wickedness. Abram was not raised in the best environment. Sometimes we're not raised with the best parents. Sometimes our parents, you know, we can, oh, I wish I had some other parents. <laughs> I've said that a lot. Sometimes we're not, sometimes, you know, we don't have the best parents that raise us. You know, they may try their best. But in the end, there's something else that's holding them from being the parent that they should be. Abraham, Abraham did, he had the same thing. His father worshipped other idols. He didn't worship the Most High. And there was wickedness in the city. So Abraham, when the Most High said to leave, Abraham didn't have a, he didn't second guess it. He said, you know what, I'm gone. Okay. Abraham was older though. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8. By faith Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance obeyed and he went out not knowing whither he went. So that song that we played a little earlier about get your inheritance it's a little wrong. We already had it. Because Abraham already went out and got it. And that's what I said. So you don't have to go get your inheritance. <clears throat> you already got it. Mm -hmm. 
I don't have anything. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. See, the world will sit up there and tell you, yeah, you ain't got nothing. You ain't got nothing. But when in fact, you have everything. You have everything that the world wants. What is that? To be a child who is loved by the Most High God. To be a chosen people that the Most High has a covenant over you. Covenant means contract. We're going to talk about that a little later. Abraham heard the voice of the Most High and there was no hint that the Most High spoke to him that he questioned who the Most High was. Further, he did not confuse the voice of the Most High with the idols and false gods that his father worshipped. He knew who was speaking to him, and it was apparent that the Most High was speaking to him because it was the Most High. He believed the promise that was made to him. He knew that those statues and those wooden and stone statues, like if I go out there and get a rock and sit it right here, and I start praying to that rock, do you really think that rock is going to say anything to me? <laughs> right. If I was to go out there and cut off some tree branches and form it into a shape of a man and sit it right here and start praying to it, do you think it's going to talk back to me? No. It's a tree. It's a rock. But people do that. They do that because they want to see an image. They want to see something. See, we can't see the Most High, right? We can't see him. No. But we know he's here, right? right? Okay, so we don't have to put up a big rock and say, this is the most high. <laughs> he don't like that. He doesn't like it. Let's get 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Mm -hmm. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So when you start understanding that you are a chosen child of the Most High, the, the, the living God who created the heavens and the earth, who created everything around us, you start to understand that you know that once you become born again, you're a new creature in Christ. Okay? All things are passed away. That means all the stuff that you did in the past, that should be passed away. And all things are become new. You start understanding and reading the Bible. You start understanding and knowing. It's new to you. Okay? Abraham first exercised saving faith. And the evidence of having saving faith was that he trusted what the Most High says. Whenever you get in a situation and something is saying in your ear, don't go in that room. That's the most high. Be careful. That's the most high. Or don't cross the street yet. That's the most high. When something is telling you, cuss her out. That's Satan. Yeah. Spit on her. That's Satan. Tell them that they stink and they suck and they can't read good. Ooh. That's Satan. Okay? So there's a difference. The Most High isn't going to tell you, tell her she suck or she stink or she can't read. That's not what the Most High does. Okay? So the Most High told Abraham to go to a new place. He didn't say, stay there and worship those rocks and those sticks that your father worshipped. Okay. We're going to talk about the Abrahamic covenant. The covenant that was made between the Most High and Abraham. Okay. Let's get Genesis chapter... We're going to be in Genesis a lot. Um, yeah, we're going to be in Genesis a lot. So Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 through 3. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee. 
and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. So this is the blessing. This is the covenant. This is what the Most High is telling Abraham. I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Nothing about money. Nothing about cars. Nothing about big houses. None of that. Read. And I will bless them that bless you. So anybody who blesses you, they're going to be blessed also. Anybody who treats you good, they're going to be treated good also by the Most High. Read. And curse him that curses. But see, if somebody curses you, then they're going to be cursed. Somebody curses you, then the Most High saying, because I made this covenant with you, if somebody talk about you, I'm going to take care of them. You don't have to do it. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. The Most High is going to take care of them. Read. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. In thee all families of the earth shall be blessed. That's why we're blessed now. We may not have the money, riches, that's all worldly stuff. We don't need that. We don't need money and riches and all that other stuff. Diamond necklaces with big old pendants on them. We don't need all that. Because that stuff is going to burn up anyway in the book of Revelation. What we're looking for is life after this earth. Y'all seen the movie The Matrix? Yes. She's so big. Okay. <laughs> three times. Three times? So you all three of you watched it three times? So you under you you kind of get what that movie is about, right? It talks about going to Zion. Yes. Guess what? Zion is in the Bible. Did you know that? Yes. Zion is the city in the Bible. We'll get into that later. I don't want to get off track. <laughs> but I don't want to get off track. Because I will do that. Alright. The book of Jubilees, chapter 15, verses 1 through 9. This is this book right here that churches don't teach out of. Okay, this is the book of Jasher. Churches don't touch this stuff. What is the book of Jubilees? Book of Jubilees basically is a book about Genesis. It's really a more detailed book on the book of Genesis. Okay, churches don't touch these because they just don't. I'm not going to give you. All right, Jubilees chapter 15, verse 1, and in the first, in the fifth year of the fourth week of this Jubilee, in the third month, in the middle of the month, Abraham celebrated the feast of the first fruits. This is where we get the feast of the first fruits, which is what we celebrate in the month of May. Okay? See? Right there. You don't see Christmas in the Bible. You don't see Thanksgiving in the Bible. Or eat. Well, actually, Easter is in the Bible, but that's a whole different subject. Yeah. All right. So the feast of first fruit, and he offered new offerings unto the altar, and the first fruits of the produce unto the Most High, a heifer, which is a female cow, and a goat and a sheep on the altar as burnt sacrifice unto the Most High their fruit offerings, and their drink offerings. He offered them upon the altar with frankincense. And the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Most High. Approve thyself before me, and thou, shalt, and thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and the Most High talked with him and said, I'm going to stop there, so imagine the Most High, and he says, what's your name again? Sire. Sire. Sire, I'm going to bless you. Sire, I'm going to make you great among the people on the earth. What would you do? I would listen to him. Oh, that would be a good thing. <laughs> 
Abraham was so overwhelmed, he just fell out. <laughs> he just fell out. He did one of the, oh! <laughs> and he just fell out. He fell on his face. And the Most High was still talking to him when he fell out. <laughs> Let's go to verse 6. He said, the Most High said, Behold, my ordinance is with thee, and thou shalt be the father of many nations. Now at this time, Abraham did not have any children at all. So how is he going to be a father if he doesn't have any children right now? Hmm. Verse 7, Neither shall my name be no more Abram, but thy name henceforth shall be Abraham. For the father of many nations I have made thee. That's what Abraham means. So the Most High said, your name's not Abram anymore. I'm going to call you. Your name is going to be Abraham. Okay. If the Most High changes your name, then you just got to go with it. <laughs> yeah. I, and I will make thee very great, and I will make thee unto nations, and kings shall come forth from thee. So the Most High is telling Abraham that you're going to have kings come from you. Royalty, not the queen of England. That's a satanic, we're not going to even talk about her. She's wicked. But kings like King David in the Bible, King Solomon in the Bible, King Josiah in the Bible, those who actually uh, followed the Most High. Verse 9. And I shall establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, throughout their generation, for an ex eternal ge covenant, so that I may the most high unto thee, and to the seed after thee. So see, when your parents are acting right, following the most high, you're blessed also. And then your children are blessed. And then your children are blessed, as long as they follow the most high. The Most High made a covenant, which is a contract, with Abraham. This covenant was an unconditional one. The Most High didn't say, Abram, if you do this, then I'll bless you. He didn't say, well, if you do that, I'll bless you. That's not what he said. He said that I'm going to bless you and your nations. It didn't come with any stipulations. It didn't come with, well, you got to wear red, or you got to have this on this Saturday, or you got to wear black on Tuesday. It didn't come with that. Okay. What Abraham was promised, a great nation will emerge from Abraham. Abraham and his seed will inherit the land forever. Abraham's seed will possess the gates of his enemies. And in Abraham, his seed, all nations of the earth will be blessed. Now you have to remember what seed came from Abraham too. We're going to talk about that because there's some people on the earth who came from Abraham. Okay? We're going to talk about that a little later. The covenant was foretold. Number one, the Most High make Abraham's descendants a great nation. Number two, the Most High would bless Abraham materially and make his name great. Number three, the Most High would protect Abraham by blessing those that blessed him and cursing those that opposed Abraham. And the last one, he's going to bless all the families throughout the earth. Okay? What does it mean by fourfold? Four fourfold. Four. Number four. So this is the blessing of Abraham. Okay? And we're part seed of that. Okay? Further, the name Abraham would be world-renowned. Everybody's heard the name Abraham. He's not only the father of the Hebrews, but he's also father of the Arabs. Okay? Three religions came from Abraham. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. All three of those religions came from Abraham. 
How did Judaism come from Abraham? Let me show you in a moment. Judaism, Christianity, and Christianity Islam. Christianity and Islam. Oh, yeah. I think I did it in Judaism. Okay. Right. Apart from the Yeshua Christ, no name is known more than Abraham. Muslims, they know Abraham. They believe Abraham is the father of Islam. Mm -hmm. Which technically he is, is the father of Islam. Mm -hmm. Because of his son, which we're going to talk about in a moment. So Abraham begins his journey to the promised land. So this is a detailed a Bible study on Abraham. We're going to talk about Isaac and we're going to talk about Jacob. Okay? The patriarchs. Genesis chapter 12, verse 4 through 6. So Abraham departed as the Most High had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. Lot was his nephew. Go ahead. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. And Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to the land of Canaan, and into the land of Canaan they came. And Abraham and Abram passed through the land unto the place of Shechem. Shechem unto the land of Moriah, Moriah. And the Canaanite was then in the land. Now, I got a question. Couldn't the land of Canaan be holy and protected by the Most High today since Abraham was told to go there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay. Food for thought. Could be. Could be. But when the Most High called Abraham, he was in Ur of the Chaldees. Then he journeyed with his father, with his father Terah, Lot, his brother, his wife, his Sarah, his wife, and traveled east to of Haran. Haran was 600 miles east of Ur. We're talking about places that are in the Middle East, not Phoenix. Okay. But he lived there. Abraham remained in Haran. We don't know. The Bible doesn't say how long he was there, but he stayed there until he was 75 years old. And remember back then, you can live to be two, 300 years old. Okay, so 75, that's just a young pup. Even though now, if we see a 75-year-old person now, they're kind of old and crinkly and wrinkly and all that. Okay, but back then, 75 was just like one of you all right now. Well, mm -hmm. a little older. But one of you all right now. <laughs> because men lived to be three, 400 years old back then. So 75 were considered to be young. Young. Abraham's southern journey took him to the city of Shechem, unto a tree of Moriah. The King James Version translated as a plain of Moriah, but it's literally a tree of Moriah. This is identified near Nebulus between Mount Elba and Mount Gerser, which are there today. And this is some 30 miles north of Jerusalem, west of Jordan River, in the center of Palestine, which the land was occupied by the Canaanites, which we're going to talk about in a few weeks. The Most High reveals that this is the promised land. So the Most High tells Abram, okay, this is it. Let's get Genesis chapter 12, verse 7 and 8. And the Most High appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. Mm -hmm. And there builded he an altar unto the Most High who appeared unto him. Uh -huh. And he removed from thence unto a mountain on the east of Bethel, mm -hmm. and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and Hai on the east. Uh -huh. And there he built, built it, an altar unto the Most High, and called upon the name of the Most High. So this is the land that Abraham was promised. 
east of Bethel and high on the east. So that's the land that he was promised. When it says he called upon the name of the Most High, I thought he didn't know his name. He called upon the name of the Most High. He didn't know his name. Uh, oh. He just said the one true living God. Yeah. That's what he thought his name was, the one true living God. Oh, yeah. The Most High appears again to Abraham and tells him what this land the Most High would give him and his descendants. Abraham then built an altar, made a sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Most High. Abraham moved again and journeyed 20 miles south of Bethel, and again he built another altar and prayed. So let's talk about Abraham and Lot, who was his nephew. Okay. Abraham and Lot had already experienced much with each other. Lot was kind of like Abraham's son. Lot's father had died in a war. And Abram took him like a son because Abraham at this time did not have a son. Okay? But something happened. Let's get Genesis chapter 30, I'm sorry, Genesis chapter 13, verse 1 through 4. And Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot with him into the south. Mm -hmm. And Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. That's key. Abraham, Abraham was already rich. You know what I mean? We'll get to that later. Go ahead. And he went on his journeys from the south even to Bethel, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Hai. So see, Abraham did, Abraham did something that I kind of don't understand why he did it. The Most High had showed him the land that he was supposed to have. Why did he move to Egypt? Anybody know? Because there was a famine. Because there was a famine going on. There was no food. So the father of faith, that's what Abraham is called, didn't have that much faith at that time because there was no food there. Even though the Most High showed him where he's supposed to live. So he went on to Egypt. A lot of bad stuff happened in Egypt. So then he had to leave Egypt and go back to where the Most High told him to go in the first place. So he didn't listen at first, did he? That's what happened with us sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're told, don't go in that room. And we just say, you know what, I'm going to go in this room anyway. Only to find out there's some things that you shouldn't be seeing in that room that the Most High told you not to go in. Then you you leave the room, going back to where he told you, you're standing in a spot where he told you, don't go in that room. Same thing here. Immediately upon arriving in Bethel, Abraham seeks fellowship with the Most High. He seeks restoration from the experience in Egypt. So he was talking to the Most High. They went to Egypt and his wife, the Pharaoh, started looking at his wife and was like, mm, she looked good. I'm going to take her as my wife. Sorry. Abraham said, oh, that, that's my sister. That's not my wife. Because if Pharaoh liked his wife and Abraham said, that's my wife, Abraham could get killed. Pharaoh can say, I'm going to take your wife and I'm going to kill you. So Abraham lied and said, oh, Sarah... Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sarah's my sister. So then Pharaoh said, I'm good. She my wife now. Of course, Abraham got her back. There was a big, there was sickness going on. People were dying in Egypt. And the Pharaoh said, okay, something's going on. Ever since I took that wife, Sarah, stuff has been happening in my, in my house. Be careful what you let in your house. When you get a house, be careful. You already have one. Be careful what you let in. Okay? So then Abraham, he had to talk to the Most High because he was just, he was feeling bad about Egypt. 
Abraham and Lot traveled to Egypt. Lot, no doubt, acquired wealth also. I'm going to show you that in a minute. And the herdsmen of Lot began to, they began to fight. Lot's people and Abraham people started fighting each other because there wasn't enough land for the cows and the sheep to, you know, eat grass. Can you know that? Don't know how that. Was that in Joshua too? What's in Joshua? About um, Abraham and Lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, nervous tension would have been prevailed. Abraham had his people. Lot had his people. And they were like, you know what? They started fighting because there wasn't enough land to feed the animals. Okay? Abraham said, you know what, Lot? You can either go to the left or the right. And he gave him first choice. Now, Abraham was the older one. So, Technically, Abraham could have said, I'm going to go to the left. You go to the right. But Abraham said, you know what, Lot? You choose. Well, wouldn't that have to do with faith? Because he knows after Egypt, no matter where he went, he will be blessed. Blessed, right. So, so Lot decided, hmm, <laughs> Sodom and Gomorrah, that sounds like a very good place to move to. Nice school system. <laughs> um, nice education. They got a culture center. I'm going to move to Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what people in these third world countries think about America. Right. You make some money. But see, Abraham knew uh, you don't want to go there. And sometimes if you got a good parent, if you're saying, well, I'm going to do this, and the parent's saying, eh, I don't think so, and you're going to do it anyway, or you speaking to somebody at your church, or you speaking to an elder, and you tell them, well, I want to do this. And the elder says, well, I don't think you should do that. And you do it anyway, you're going to end up in Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm. Mm. Let's get, oh, never mind. Jubilees chapter 13, verse 14 to 21. And Abraham, and Abram was glorious by reason of possessions and sheep and cattle and asses and horses and camels and men servants and maid servants and in silver and gold exceedingly and lot also. Mm -hmm. Now when I say asses I don't mean a curse word. Those are donkeys. Like, he cussing. No. <laughs> Verse 15. His brother son was wealthy. So Lot was wealthy. And the Pharaoh gave back Sarai, the wife of Abram, and he sent out of the land of Egypt, and he journeyed to a place where he had pitched his tent at the beginning, to the place of the altar, with I on the east and Bethel on the west. And he blessed the Most High who brought him back in peace. And it came to pass the 41st Jubilee in the third year of that first week that he returned to a place and offered thereon a burnt sacrifice, called on the name of the Most High and said, Thou art the Most High God, art my God forever. So that's what he called the name of the Most High. He said, the Most High God. That's what he thought his name was. So what, what, is, what is modern day Canaan now? Is there a Canaan? Modern day Canaan right now, I believe it is Jordan, I want to say. Look it up now. Okay. Verse 17, and ever, in the fourth year of this week, Lot parted from him, and Lot dwelt in Sodom, and the men of Sodom were sinners exceedingly, and he grieved them in his heart that his brother's son had parted from him. So Abraham knew that Sodom was bad. It was a bad city, like a little, like central Phoenix. Sodom was bad. And he said there's a lot of bad stuff happening. People getting robbed, people getting murdered, stuff like that was going on in Sodom. And he was saying, stay here. But sometimes we get a little carried away and we say, you know what? I'm grown. I'm going to do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So young people don't ever say, I'm grown. I'm going to do what I want to do. 
Because that's a telltale sign right there that Satan is going to get you. Yeah, something's going to go wrong. All right, verse 20. He had parted from him, for he had no children. And in that year when Lot was taken captive, the Most High said unto Abraham, after that Lot had parted from him in the fourth year of this week, lift up thy eyes to the place where thou art dwelling northward and southward and eastward, westward and eastward. For all the land which thou seest, I will give to thee and thy seed forever. So once again, the Most High is telling him, this is your land. Mm -hmm. Bless you. And again, he reminds Abraham of the covenant. For the land which I, which thou seest, I will give unto thee and to thy seed forever. And I will make thy seed as the sand of the sea. So when you walk on the beach, y'all ever walked on the beach? No? Oh, that's bad. But it's a lot of sand. Oh, millions of little grains of sand. And through a man may number the dust of the earth. Now, I know you've seen dust, right? This is Arizona. So dust is everywhere. So that's what he's saying. Your people are going to be everywhere. Thy seed shall, be, shall not be numbered. You can't count those people. You can't count us. Too many of us. Ishmael. This is Abraham's firstborn son. Ishmael was a child of favor then, like many, took an unexpected turn. When Sarah, the wife of Abraham, found herself barren, she encouraged her husband to sleep with her maidservant. This was wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. Sarah should not have did that. Because the Most High said that I will bless you. He said, he keeps telling him, I'm going to bless you. But what does Sarah do? She goes and takes things in her own hands. See, what happens when you start doing things that the Most High, that when you start doing things first, like Most High says, I want you to study for 20 minutes, and then I want you to clean your room. If you say, well, you know what, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to sit and watch TV all night long. That's disobeying Father. And then when you come time to take a test, and since everybody in here is in school, I can relate this to everybody except for me. When it comes time to take a test, you're not prepared because the Most High said study. You decide you want to watch TV. So now you get a big F. Oh, no. A red one, too. Oh, and no. And Margaret. I pray you're not prophesying. Because I was supposed to be chapter 9 and I didn't. <laughs> because the most I said, do your homework. Oh, right? no. Oh, no. That's what Sarah I'm said, you know what, Abraham? <laughs> Here's my maid servant. I can't get pregnant, so you get her pregnant. The most I totally, that was pagan customs from Egypt. And the Most High did not like it one day. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did do that. Yeah. The Most High heard Hagar's prayer, which was the bond servant. But 13 years later, Sarah did give birth and gave birth to Isaac, which we'll talk about in a minute. Suddenly, through no fault of his own, Ishmael was no longer the heir. See, the youngest again. Ishmael was older than Isaac, but Isaac got the blessing and Ishmael didn't. Why? Because Ishmael was not born of Abraham and Sarah. He was born from Abraham and Hagar. Jubilees chapter 17 verses 1 through 9. And in the first year of the fifth week, Isaac was weaned in this jubilee. That means that he, he was uh, being birthed, he was being breastfed. He was weaned from being. He was weaned in this jubilee. He was taken off the breast. 
Oh, that's what I mean. Oh, okay. And Abraham made a great banquet in the third month, and on the day his son Isaac was weaned. And, Ab and Ishmael, son of Hagar, the Egyptian, was before the face of Abraham, his father, in a place of Abraham rejoiced and blessed the Most High because he had seen his sons and had not died childless. So Abraham was happy. He had two boys. At first he didn't have none. But now he has two. And he remembered the words which the Most High spoke to him on the day which Lot had parted. See, Lot wasn't his son. He was his uh, nephew. When Lot left, Abraham was sad. But the Most High came to Abraham and said, I'm going to make you a nation. I'm going to give you sons. And now he has two. Another question. Uh -huh. How is it that Hagar was Egyptian, but the Ishmael is Muslim? Well, that's the religion. Right. Is the, we're going to get to that. We're going to talk about the 12 princes of Ishmael. Okay. Uh, because it's from the father anyway. It's not really counted as on, on the mother's side. Which Lot had parted from him and rejoiced because the Most High had given him a seed on the earth to inherit the earth and blessed all his mouth, the creator of all things. And Sarah saw Ishmael playing and dancing, and Abraham rejoiced with great joy. And Sarah became jealous of Ishmael. Sarah was jealous, and when she saw Ishmael dancing, she thought that Isaac wasn't going to be the heir. So she said, okay, it's time for them to go. Time for them to be kicked out the camp, right? Jubilees chapter 17, verse 5. Bondwoman of her son and the son of this bondwoman will not err on my son Isaac. And the thing grievous in Abraham's sight because of his maidservant, because of his son. We're going to talk about something that's going to be very, very key later on. On technically a curse that Sarah put on herself by doing this. And they're following us too? No. Okay, <laughs> verse 6. That he should drag them from them. And the Most High said to Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the child and because of the bondwoman and all that Sarah hath said unto thee. So Sarah was opening her mouth when she shouldn't have been opening her mouth. And something's going to happen to Sarah later on, which I'm going to show you. Hearken to her word, hearken to her words and do them. So the Most High is saying, Make peace. Isaac shall thy name and seed be called. But as for the son of this bondwoman, I will make him a great nation, because he is of thy seed. And Abraham rose in the morning, took the bread and bottle of water, placed it on his shoulders of Hagar and the child, and sent her away. Now, because, Ed, because the Most High is not going to go back on the promise. If he promised you that you're going to be blessed, or if he promised you that you're going to pass, or he promised anything to you, he's going to fulfill that promise no matter what you do. Okay? I don't think y'all heard. The most, high. the most high, when he promised you something, he's going to fulfill that promise even if you do something wrong. Well, yeah, because he's a man that, I mean, he's a, he's a man of the says a man that cannot lie. Or he's not going to break his promise. Right. What does he mean? Right. Correct. Sons of Ishmael. So we're going to talk about the sons of Ishmael. Of course, his father is Abraham. The mother is Hagar. His half-brother is Isaac. The sons of Ishmael are... Nebaioth, Kedar, Abdel, Misham, I'm sorry, Mitsam, Mishma, Duma, Masa, Hadad, Tima, 
Judah, Naphish, and Kithma. He had two daughters, Methela and Bas Basmith. Okay. So we're going to talk about these, and some of these are actually in the Bible. Some of Ishmael's sons are listed in the Bible. We're going to talk about those really quick. So we're going to talk about the 12 tribes of Ishmael. Oh my goodness, Ishmael Yes. So we're going to talk about the 12 tribes of Ishmael. They are all Arabs. Thanks, Sarah. They are all Arabs. Okay. They, the uh, 12 tribes of Ishmael is where the Muslim religion comes from. First son is Nabaja. So more information is known about the dependence of Ishmael's eldest son, Nabaja, than any of the others. The Bible, Kedar, and the tribe of Neba were known for sheep raising. Okay? They were known for sheep raising. So let's get the scripture. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 7, read. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nebog shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Now if you read that scripture, you would have no idea that that's Ishmael's son that they're talking about. Mm -hmm. No idea that that's Ishmael's son that they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And Ishmael's sons have been, they're talked all through the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Learn. Knowledge is wisdom. Knowledge is wonder. Knowledge. Okay? <laughs> Nebajah is specifically mentioned in the Jewish, by the Jewish historian Josephus, who identified the Nabithians of this time with Ishmael's oldest son. He claimed that the Nabithians lived through the whole country, extending from the Euphrates to the Red Sea, which is a very big land. In reference to this area, Nabinti, or the area of the Nabithians' range there. Some of you know that we teach out of the book of Josephus. Um, those of you who have it, if you go to the Jewish Antiquities, Chapter 1, um, number 120, uh, I'm sorry, it's Book of Jewish Antiquities, first book, 22nd chapter, first paragraph. It'll explain who these people are. Hold on, that one It's chap. that's the Jewish Antiquities, book number 1. Chapter 22, paragraph number 1. So, last sentence, the Nabitians spoke and wrote an early form of Arabic, and thus they were often referred to as Arabs by Greek and Roman. His next son, Mip, Mip, Mipsham and Mishma. Some historians wondered about the descendants of Mishma were founders of villages around Jebel Mishma. It is thought that these two tribes may have intermarried with the Simonites, which are the tribe of Simeon, which on this board is the tribe of the, well, yeah, the Dominicans. So people who live in the Dominican Republic, those are from Simeon. Right. We're going to get First Chronicles, First Chronicles, chapter four, verse twenty-four through twenty-seven. The sons of Simeon were Nem Nemuel and Jamin, Jerob, Dara, and Shal. Good. Read. 
Shalyum, his son, Mibsam, his son, Mishma. So right there, you would think that those were the sons of Simeon if you were reading this passage in the Bible. But Mibsham and Mishma are sons of Ishmael. They intermarried. So you had Arabs intermarrying with the tribe of Simeon, who are right now the current day people in the Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. Read. And the sons of Mishma. So, just to point out that these two sons are from Ishmael, they're not from Simeon. So when you read the Bible, yeah, I'll just leave it like that. Kedar. As we have already mentioned, the sons of Kedar became known as the Kedarites. The Kedarites were mainly military power, the sons of Ishmael. And Isaiah speaks of them as being gifted archers, and that's in Isaiah. Oh, never mind. Give me um, Isaiah 42, 11. Whenever the Bible talks about Kedarites, in the Bible, they're always called as nomads. And nomads were people who just lived in the desert. Oh my goodness, that's what they do now. Right. Isaiah 42, 12. Go ahead. 11. 42, 11. Let the wilderness and, all, and the cities thereof lift up their voice. The villages that Kedar doth inhabit, let the inhabitants of the rock sing, let them shout from the top of the mountain. So anytime that you see Kedar in the Bible, it's referring to Ishmael's son, Kedar. Okay, give me um, Jeremiah 49, 28. And then after that, mark that and get Ezekiel 27, 21. Get Ezekiel 27, 21 first. And then get back to Jeremiah 49, 28. Kedar is very popular throughout the Bible. His son is all through the His people, Kedar people, are all through the Bible. Go ahead. Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 28. Concerning Kedar... And concerning the kingdoms of Hazor and Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, shall smite thus, saith the Lord. Arise ye, go up to Kedar, and spoil the men of the east. So what that's saying is that they were in, they were in with Babylon as far as destro destroying us. Mm -hmm. Go to Ezekiel 27, 21. Arabia and all the princes of Kedar, they occupied with thee the, the land. Read that beginning part again. Arabia. Arabia. And, Go ahead. And all the princes of Kedar. Princes of Kedar, they were Arabians. Arabs, as we want to call them. Mm -hmm. They occupied with thee and lambs and rams and goats, and these were they thy merchants. Okay, that's good. Massa, the tribe of Massa is possibly connected with the Masoni of North Arabia, as mentioned in the book of Ptolemy, Geography, verse 18, page number 2. Ptolemy was a scholar. See, if you love history, you're going crazy right now. You're just like, ah! See, I love history. So I'm just like, I'm, I'm drooling right now. 
Yeah. All right. These, those holding to the theory that the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea into Arabia proper identified El Masa as the place where the Israelites murmured. Remember, the Israelites were murmuring and complaining <clears throat> about, you know, food. They were given manna, which is like, um, you've had angel food cake. It's like white cake. Yeah, strawberry shortcake. That's what it's come from. They was given, the most I was giving them that in the wilderness. And they were complaining. Well, all this cake, I don't want this cake. I want some meat. <laughs> so then most I started throwing meat they way. Oh, this is too much meat. You see? Complain, complain, complain. When you be around somebody and they just complain all the time, just, just, why are you doing that? That ain't nice. All right. Tribe of Jeter is unknown. We don't know what happened. The Bible doesn't say what happened to these people. My historical books don't say what happened to these people. They just don't know. Uh, no, we know what happened to Dan. Oh. Hadad. Some historians speculate that this tribe may have been come known as Hayar, or the Hiranian people that lived in the mountains northwest of Pomeria. This also is interesting to notice that there is a Hadad tribe in Arabia. And most Hadads are now Christians. Naphtish is unknown. Nobody's in there. Okay. Abdel. The tribe of Abdel is often identified with the people of the Id was something in the land of Arabu, who became subjects to the Tilgath Pilsar II, that's 744 BC to 727 BC. He was like an Assyrian king or something. And we're going to talk about the Assyrian captivity probably sometime in April. His tribe was said to have dwelt far away towards the west. Okay. Duma. Oh, I did not increase that. Duma is generally identified by historians as a Adrenian a Duma to people from Shinobab. Shinobab was the king of Assyria when Assyria took us captive. And I believe we have scripture coming out of the Yes, Isaiah chapter 21, verse 10 through 12. All my threshing and the corn of my floor, that which I have heard of the Most High of hosts, the power of Israel have I declared unto you. The burden of Duma, he calleth to me out of Seir, watchman. What of the night, watchman? What of the night? The watchman said, the morning cometh, and also the night. If ye will inquire, inquire ye return, come. So Duma is another one of Ishmael's sons. Okay. Tima. Tima is located in the Hejaz district with the trade routes between Terebith and Duma. Between Tama and Duma is a famous Napu desert. And though it is present day of Tamya, at the southern end of the great Nafu Desert is on the remains of ancient oasis. And we're going to talk about Job. The, these group of people, Tima, they had something to do with what happened with Job in the Bible. Let's get Job chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. Now, before I get there, remember, in the book of Job, when stuff was happening to Job and he was being, you know, people were taking his land and killing his, killing his family, well, Satan killed his family. There were some people that were robbing him. Who were they? I believe they were Ishmael's sons, Tima. Read. The troops of Tima 
took the companies That's of, looked. looked the companies of Sheba waited for them. They were confounded because they had hoped. They come hither and were ashamed. Because Dima is unknown. There, there's no, we don't know what, I can't find anything on them. And that was it. Those are the 12 sons of Ishmael. Next week we're going to talk about the 12 sons of Jacob, which we're going to do really in depth. Okay? Faith is not an emotion. It is a decision to stand on the most high's word. What that means is that I have faith that when you all leave, you're going to make it home safe. That's faith. The other part of faith is faith with no boundaries, which means that I know for sure that when you leave, you're going to make your home safe. There's a difference. Isaac. So now we didn't talk about Ishmael. So we're going to talk about Isaac. And that's Isaac's name in Hebrew. Nice. Even though I can't write like that. I can write like that with my right hand. But I'm left handed. So I guess I'm the only one got control. Alright, Isaac was a miracle child born to Abraham and Sarah in their old age. Sarah was like 90 years old, and she had Isaac, a baby. Abraham was, I think, was a um, hundred. Abraham was a hundred years old, and he made a baby. I, Sarah was 90. Man, have you seen somebody who was 90? Yes. Yes. I mean, they look old, and one eye be shut, and the other one be like barely open. They be all wrinkled. And yeah, but we've seen a 97-year-old. 97 year old, so you pretty much know what they look like. Imagine a 97, was it a man or a woman? Woman. Imagine her having a, having being pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> imagine, imagine that 97 year old woman carrying a baby. She probably She probably, yeah, she probably would fall down. <laughs> It's so possible. It, yeah. <laughs> Genesis chapter 18, <laughs> verse 13 and 14. Go ahead. And the Most High said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of oh, a surety bear a child which am old? So the Most High said, Sarah, you're going to have a baby. And she's like, Wait, I'm 90 years old. I can't have no baby. I'm past that age. She started to laugh. It wasn't laughing because of, you know, disrespect to the Most High. It was laughing because, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, right. Well, see, with the female anatomy, when we're born, uh -oh. when we're in our mother's womb, we're still young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, it's already put in us, like, our eggs and how many babies we're going to have, how many eggs we can have. And a woman stopped having a period, a, a, menstru a menstrual, at least maybe 50, some 50, 55. So I can understand why she laughed because she wasn't having a menstrual. You know, she wasn't in a womanly way anymore. So how could you mm -hmm. get pregnant if you're not having a monthly cycle? Yeah, but let's read verse 14. I would have laughed too. <laughs> Is anything too hard for the Most High? Oh, that's wrong, Father. Read it again. Is anything too hard for the Most High? Is anything too hard for the Most High? Did did the three wise men actually tell Abraham that they would have a child? The three angels. The three wise men. Oh, it was three angels that talked to Abraham. Um, you hear my teaching? That's later. <laughs> so stay out of my teaching, all right? We'll be friends. You stay out of my teaching. 
<laughs> that was just joking. I'm just joking. Don't beat me up after me. Okay, so verse 14. Uh, we're going to talk about those three angels in a minute. Because this is what's this is where the three angels are. Verse 14. At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Sarah shall have a son. So she's 90. Probably ain't got that many teeth. And she said, I'm not going to have that baby. Why is he imagining the worst because you're old? He is. He's one All right. Now, so that was the birth of Abraham. I mean, I'm sorry, the birth of Isaac. And you were right. There were three angels. It was the three wise men came with Christ. But there were three angels who were with Abraham and were talking to Sarah about Sarah having a baby. The three wise men came when Christ was a little boy. Sacrifice. Now remember earlier I said that Sarah was going to have to pay for what she did with Hagar and Ishmael, right? Because she sent them away. She's, that, that, that's going to be consequences. The Most High said, okay, a Abraham, Keep the peace in your home. I'm going to show you that in a moment. The book of Jasher, chapter 23, verses 25 through 40. So let, let's break this down. Because this is the birth of Isaac. And whilst Abraham was preceded with his, I'm sorry, this is Abraham, the most I told Abraham, to go and sacrifice your son as a burnt offering. Mm. He didn't actually do it. Now you and my teacher. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> Let, let's just stop it. Y'all have a good night. Okay. So, Abraham was so in love with his son Isaac that Abraham started not to do the work of the Most High anymore. So the Most High said, you know what? I'm going to test him. Abraham, I want you to go and I want you to sacrifice your son. I want you to kill your son. I want you to cut him just like you would a lamb. And I want you to burn him as an offering to me. Now Abraham was like, he had to do it. If the Most High says you got to do it, you have to do it. So, but let's let's find out some stuff. This is going to be good. Verse twenty-five. And whilst Abraham was proceeding with his son Isaac along the road, guess who comes? Satan. Satan comes, and we all know who Satan is, right? Mm -hmm. The devil. Mm -hmm. Satan comes mm -hmm. and appeared to Abraham in a figure of a very aged man. Humble with a contrite spirit. So see, Satan is not no pitchfork demon with horns and a tail. Satan don't come to people like that. He comes to people like this. An old man who looks like he's humble, meaning he's quiet. And a contrite spirit, meaning that he has a good face. There's something good about him. That's what Satan comes. He's a deceiver. It said in a figure. And approached Abraham, and this is what he said to Abraham. Art thou silly or brutish that thou goest and do this thing this day to thy only son? So right then and there, Satan already knows that, hey, if he goes, if he goes through with it, then that means that he loves and he going to listen to the Most High forever. So I'm going to have to stop him. He's trying to put doubt. Doubt. He's trying to make him doubt. Him. Yes. And see, that's what Satan, Satan doesn't come to you evil all the time. Mm -hmm. Satan comes to you in a good figure, a good way to trick you. Mm -hmm. All blessings that you get are not from the Most High. Some blessings can come from Satan. Remember that. So Satan says, 
you're silly. You're going to go do this to your only son? Verse 26. The most I gave thee a son in the latter day. This is Satan talking. The most I gave thee a son in the latter days, in thy old age, and wilt thou go and slaughter him this day, because he committed no violence. Isaac was what, about 13? So you're going to go kill him? He hasn't done anything. This is what Satan is saying to Abraham. And thou wilt cause thy soul of thy only son to perish from the earth? Satan continues. Dost thou know that and understand that this cannot be from the Most High? Mm. He's telling him that this can't be from the Most High. You going to kill your son is not from God. For the most I cannot do unto man such evil upon the earth to say, go slaughter your child. This is what Satan does. He, this is how he operates. Verse 28. And Abraham heard this and knew that it was Satan. See, Abraham was smart. And he knew that Satan was talking to him. And to draw him aside from the way of the Most High. That's what Satan wants to do. He wants to make sure that you don't follow the Most High. Mm -hmm. So he's going to come and you like a, a best friend. He's going to come in the form of a best friend and say, you know what? We don't have to go to school today. I know of a way we can get out of going to school. Going to school. That's Satan talking through one of your best friends. Just the same here. Or you in a store and somebody says, why don't you just put that in your pocket? You don't have to pay for it. Mm. We can just walk out and nobody will know. There's not even a camera up here. See, that's the same thing. Verse 28. I'm sorry, I just read that. Uh, but Abraham would not hearken to the voice of Satan. So anytime anything comes in your mind, do this. It's wrong. Immediately, Abraham rebuked him. I rebuke you, Satan. So that he went away. But see, Satan ain't done. He went to Abraham. Now he's going to go to Isaac. Mm -hmm. Verse 29, And Satan returned and came to Isaac. And appeared unto Isaac in the figure of a young man, calm and well favored. <laughs> so see, Satan, now he's turned himself. He was an old man when he went to Abraham. Now he's a young man. Why? Because Isaac is a young man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he come to Isaac as a young man, right? Yes. So then he approached Isaac and said, Dost thou know that and understand that that silly old father? See, that's what Satan says when your parents tell you to do something. That silly old your, your father's silly. Your mother's silly. She don't know what she's talking she don't about. Know what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. Dost thou know that and understand that that silly old father bringeth thee to slaughter this day for not? Now, therefore, my son, see, that's what Satan does. Therefore, my son, do not listen or attend to him, for he is a silly old man, and let not thy precious soul and beautiful figure be lost from the earth. So Satan is sweet-talking Isaac. Beautiful figure. Satan is sweet-talking Isaac. He's just trying, he's, he's telling him all kinds of good things so that he can go against his yeah, and Abraham answered his son Isaac and said unto him, Take heed of him and do not listen to his words, nor attend to him, for he is Satan. So he knew that he was Satan. Endeavoring to draw us aside from the commands of the Most High. Mm. And Abraham still rebuked Satan, and Satan went from them, and seeing he could not prevail over them, he hid himself from them, and he went and passed before them in the road. 
And now Satan transformed himself into a body of water. What? So understand this, that Satan does not have to come to you as a person. He can come to you as a, like a dog. You see a dog and it start running after you? You gonna run back. This is what I'm saying. Satan appears in all shapes and forms. He transformed himself into a large body of water. In the road, and Abraham and Isaac and his two young men reached that place and saw a brook very large and powerful with mighty waters. Now this is what Abraham said after, right after that. Verse 36. And they went, they started walking through the water. 35. Oh, 35. And they entered the brook and passed through it, and the waters reached them, at first reached their legs. So the waters was kind of like to their legs. And they went deeper in the brook, and the waters reached their necks. So the water was wow. here. And they were terrified on the account of the water. And whilst they were going over the brook, Abraham recognized it and he knew that there was no water there before. Mm. Abraham said, there's, there's no water been here before. Where's all this water coming from now? Have y'all ever said that? Yeah. Like y'all been to a place before? And you're like, wait a minute, many times I've been here. This wasn't here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. There you go. And Abraham it's said so to Isaac, hard. I know this place in which there was no brook nor water. Now, Abraham said, therefore, this is Satan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And does all this to us to draw us aside from the day of the commands of the Most High. So when the Most High tells you to do something and you start to do it, Satan is going to come in any way, shape, or form to stop you from doing it. But there, yes, exactly. There's more. Abraham rebuked him and said, The most high rebuke thee, O Satan, be gone before us as we command, as we go by the commands of the most high. Now, in the book of Matthew, remember when Yeshai was on the boat and the water was being thrown around and he was asleep? Satan was messing with the wind. Causing the water to go crazy. Remember when Peter was walking on the water? Mm -hmm. And then Peter started to sink because he saw the wind. Mm -hmm. Now tell me, can anybody see wind? Yeah. You go outside right now and it start to breathe. Can you see it? <laughs> Peter was so Peter was starting to walk on water. And Satan saw that he was walking on water. So Satan said, if this person starts walking on water. I can just blow him straight down. Right. I can just blow him straight down with a big wind. So a big wind came Peter walking. And then there's a wind. And he started to sink. And then Christ came and pulled him up and said, ye of little faith. Same thing here. Satan came through Abraham in the appearance of water. Verse 39. Oh no, verse 38. Abraham rebuked him and said unto him, The Most High rebuke thee, O Satan, that have gone before us as we go by the commands of the Most High. And Satan was terrified at the voice of Abraham. One thing I noticed in the Bible, even with the archangel Michael, he said, The Lord rebuke you. So it's not I rebuke you. Right. And so we've been saying it wrong all the time. I it's, I, it's the most high rebuke you. Yeah, it's not. I. That's why you say, I rebuke you, I rebuke you. People, Who are you? Yeah. Oh, You're nothing. That. There you go. <laughs> so it's the a higher rebuke you. Hey, you shy as so all the time, I rebuke you, Satan. Satan is probably laughing at you. <laughs> because you have no power. But if you say, the most high rebuke you, yeah. that's something different. Okay? All right. Verse 40. And Abraham went with Isaac towards the place that the Most High had told him. So this is leading Isaac to the altar of sacrifice, right? Oh. There you go. Isaac? Give me that. That's how you are 
<laughs> Get Psalms 34 7. When you say, I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of the Most High, or the Most High rebuke you, that's how you look towards Satan. That's how he think you look. Right. Now, who would want to mess with that person? Not me. Definitely not me. So imagine Satan see you, Satan see you dress just like that. You got your sword out, you got your shield out. That's how Satan look at you when you say, the most high rebuke you, Satan. Read. Psalms chapter 34, verse 7. The angel of the most high encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Right. I rebuke you in the name of the most high. I mean, uh, I the no, most high I rebuke you. Okay. Of course, the prophecy came true. Abraham obeyed the Most High, naming Isaac, which means laugh. When Isaac was the youth, the Most High ordered Abraham to take his son to be sacrificed. And as soon as he raised it up to sacrifice his son, the Most High stopped him. But we got to talk about Sarah. See, Satan wasn't finished. Satan wasn't finished. He's going to find the weakest link. He knows that, okay, I can't deal with Abraham. Abraham is rebuking, you know, the, the calling on the Most High, rebuking me. Let me get to Sarah. The book of Jasher, chapter 23, verse 76 to 86. And Satan went to Sarah. And he appeared to her in the figure of an old man, very humble and meek. So once again, Satan is not going to come at you all big and bad and all that. He's going to come to you as a person who you can put your arm around and call it him. But you can trust and relate to. Him. Yes, relate to. Correct. And Abraham was yet engaged with in the burnt offering. And Satan. This is what he said. Dost thou know all the work that Abraham has made with thy only son this day? So he said, don't you know what Abraham is doing to your son right now? For he took Isaac and built an altar and killed him. So he lied. He, lied. <laughs> he said he built an altar and he killed him and brought him up as a sacrifice upon the altar. And then he says, Isaac started crying. And then he says, Abraham didn't even look at him when he killed him. Mm. And then he said, Abraham didn't even have compassion for him. This is what Satan is telling Sarah, his mother. Lying. Verse 78. And then he didn't say it once, he said it twice. <laughs> it says Satan repeated these words. And then he left her. And Sarah heard all of Satan's words. Now she did not do what Ab excuse me, what Abraham did. She did not say, the most high rebuke you say. This is what she did. She imagined him to be an old man amongst the sons of men who had been with her son and had come to told her these things. So she believed that she believed that the lie. She believed the lie. Mm -hmm. You get into trouble each and every time Satan throws a lie and you believe it. Satan says, you dumb, you can't do mad. All of a sudden, you thinking, I can't do mad. Do mad? There you go. That's how you talk to. That's how you would tell him. But see, Satan comes and says, you can't do mad. Or Satan will come and say, you can't do this or you can't do that. The first time you say, I can't do something, he got you. Come out. Verse 78. And Satan repeated these words. I read that already. Let's go to verse 79. Now Sarah, instead of Sarah saying, the most I rebuke you, this is what she does. 
Sarah lifted up her voice and wept and cried out bitterly on the account of her son. She threw herself on the ground. So she just went. Now remember, Sarah is like about a hundred years old now. So she just slams herself down on the ground. And she cast dust in her head. Back in the old days when they were really in sorrow, they would put dust in their head. Not in this Hebrew is what I have. And she said, Oh Isaac, oh my son Isaac, my son. You know, you ever see TV where the, uh, a boy gets killed or something and the mother is like, Oh my baby! Oh my baby! She jumped up. That's what she was doing. That's what Sarah was doing. That day, now, now this is something else. Watch this. Oh, my son, Isaac, my son. Oh, that I had this day died instead of thee. Oh. So she put a curse on herself. Mm -hmm. She was saying, I want to die, not you. She put a curse on herself. She's still cursed. And she continued to weep. And said, it grieves me for thee, my son Isaac. And she says it again, that I had died this day in thy steed. I, Lord, take me. I have heard somebody say that before. Don't take my son. Take, take me. me. I have heard On somebody TV. say that. On TV, yeah. yeah. No, we person. saw somebody in person actually yeah. say that. Uh -huh. Lord, don't take my son. Take me. First of all, the Lord doesn't take. That's Satan who takes. Verse 80. And she continued to weep and said, It grieves me for thee that I have reared thee and brought thee up, and now my joy is turned into mourning. That's what Satan does. He takes your joy and he turns it to sadness. He takes your happiness and turns it to crying and bitterness. You can't take my joy. That's right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> that I have longed for thee and cried and prayed to the Most High. I bear thee at 90 years old. Imagine waiting 90 years for something. Imagine waiting. What's your favorite food? Imagine waiting 90 years for another plate of ravioli. Mm, What's your favorite food? Imagine waiting 90 years for your next apple. Mm -mm. What's your favorite food? No. Uh, nacho. Imagine waiting uh, 90 nacho. years for some nachos. <laughs> Melvin, what's your favorite? Uh, imagine waiting 90 <laughs> years for she don't, don't for no. ch uh, oatmeal. Right. What's your favorite? Uh, imagine 90 years waiting for anything to eat. Oh, that is that's wrong. wrong. That Just imagine that. Oh, I feel like that. I'm going to be. Verse 81. Wait, wait. No, I'm sorry. And cried out and prayed to the Most High till I bear thee at 90 years old. And now hast thou served this day for the knife and the fire and to be made an offering. So she just went nuts. She was talking about the most high. But I counseled myself with thee. See, she started to wait a minute. I counseled with thee, my son, in, in, its, be, in its being the word of the most high, for this perform the command of the most high, for who can transgress the word of the most high, in whose hands soul of every living creature. So she started to say, okay, I'm going to calm myself down. If it's in the Most High's will, then the Most High will be done. But, see, Satan sees when you start to get strong, he's going to come back. Verse 82. This is Sarah talking. Thou art just, O Lord, the Most High, for all thy works are good and righteous. For I also am rejoiced with the word which thou didst command, and with my eye weepeth bitterly, my heart rejoice. So she's saying that, okay, you're gonna you're gonna take my son, fine. Because 
Your word comes before me. My eyes are crying, but my heart is rejoicing because the Most High is, you know, is with us. She starts to get strong. Verse 83. And Sarah laid her hand upon the bosom of one of her handmaids, and she became as still as stone. She became like a rock. What is that in psychology terms? Catatonic uh, schizophrenia. Catatonic. She became like a frozen statue, like fear, like. That's how she became. Verse 84. She afterward rose up and went about making inquiries. So now, okay, wait a minute. At first she was saying, you know, the most high, I, whatever he does, it's his will be done. Now she's like, wait a minute. Um, I need to find out more. Once again, disobeying father, going off on your own. The most high has you, and yet and still you gotta make inquiries. Is this what the most high is saying? Ooh, is this what the most high is saying? My mail. Is this what the I, most high is saying? You just gonna read my mail big time. Ooh. The most high says that you sit up there and you say, I know the word of the most high. I know his commandments. But then you start to I verse verse 84, she started making inquiries. Well, I need confirmation after confirmation. <laughs> she oh. came to Hebron and she inquired of those whom she met walking in the road. So she walking around. Have you heard from Abraham and Isaac? Have you heard from them? Have you heard from them? Verse 85. She came to her maid servants and the men servants of Kithar Arba, which is Hebron, and she asked concerning her son that she remained there she sent some of her servants to see so not only are you now in sin because you're not following the most high now you're going to have other people go out and find out about Abraham and Isaac where Abraham had gone with Isaac they went to seek him in the house of Shem and Eber Shem was one of the sons of Noah. Eber was the son of Shem. And they could not find him. So she's going to Shem, Eber, she's going to everybody to look for Isaac. They saw, and they saw throughout the land and he was not there. So once again she starts to panic. And that's what we do. The Most High tells us to do something, or the Most High puts a thought in our minds, and all of a sudden we start panicking and worrying. Satan comes in the form of who knows what. You start listening to what they're saying, and you're not following the scriptures, and you're not following what the Most High is saying. Then all of a sudden, you start to get power. You, oh, I feel good now. The Most High, oh, his word is golden and this and that. And then all of a sudden, you back wavering again. Well, wait a minute. Now, I, I need to find out something. Something needs to happen. You start wavering again. You go from wavering to being strong to wavering again. That's when Satan comes in verse 86. And behold, Satan came to Sarah in the shape of an old man again. And he came and stood before her and said unto her, I spoke falsely unto thee, for Abraham did not kill his son, and he is not dead. And she heard the word, her joy was so exceedingly violent. So, she was so panicked, remember earlier, she was, oh my baby! Now, she's like, yes, he's alive! And he killed her. Right here. An account of their son, her soul went out through joy. She died and was gathered to her people. She had a heart attack. From, from stress. Mm -hmm. 
She was so sad. Oh my baby. Well, she did oh she goodness. Had a tonic schizo. She went kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. And she started going around, you know. So she went from being very, very sad and distraught, depressed, yeah. to start, okay, getting herself together. Then all of a sudden, when she was getting herself together and getting strong, I got to go find out what happened. Mm -hmm. Once again, going out there, making everybody search for Isaac. That's like, you you see those shows where, you know, somebody's lost and they have all these people looking in the woods and mm -hmm. trying to find out where these, where this person is. And then something scary happens. And somebody right. dies. Yeah. So, so Sarah's like double-minded? Yes. Triple-minded. Oh, so that's what that scripture comes from? Okay. Right. Ooh. So then now then Sarah comes, Satan comes, and Satan sees all this. He says, you know what? My bad. Your son ain't dead. He's still alive. I spoke falsely against him. And she also forgot the prophecy. Right. Because it was prophesied that great uh, many nations would come, you know. From Isaac. From Isaac and From all that. Abraham and Isaac. Isaac. So she, even, she didn't think about. Ooh. Because she's thinking about the present. She's thinking about the here and now. She's not caring about the future. She got so excited and happy, she had a heart attack and died. Mm. But did she go to hell for that? Did you mm -hmm. just ask, did she just go to hell? No. Did she kill herself? No. No. Yeah. Was, the, was she doubted? <laughs> no. She was kind of double-minded, though. Not in the end. No. I'm, no. Wow. She was rejoiced. She was... Her body, your body can't take all that stress. She was stressed out from the time Satan came to her and said that Isaac was killed up until the point where, my bad. She was like a, She was going up and down, roller coaster. She was and like a she, solar pop. And plus, right. Like and plus shaking she up. Really, and plus she was really old, so. She yeah. was really old. The well, one thing that I want you to learn from what this is, is that be, you have to understand and be watchful because Satan comes in all different shapes, sizes, and whatever. The devil does not want to see you learn and grow in the most high. So he's going to bring everything your way. Sarah did not rebuke Satan, so she gave Satan power. Mm -hmm. And it costed her life. Rebecca and Isaac. Now, Isaac is older now. Genesis chapter 24, verse 10 through 15. And the servant took ten camels. For the young ladies, I really want you to pay attention to this passage. The next two pastors, I really want you to pay attention to. Read. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed, for all the good of his the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. So Abraham sent a messenger to go find Isaac a wife. Read. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by the without the city by the well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. So the women were supposed to go out and draw water. He knew that they were going to be coming out to draw water. So he had his camels there. He was waiting for something. Read. And he saw the most high of the master Abraham Abraham. I pray thee, send me good speed this day, and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Uh -huh. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city came out to draw water. Come out to draw the water. So he's waiting for these women to come because Isaac needs a wife now. Go ahead. 
and let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, shall say, drink, and I will give thy camel's drink. Read that again in highlight, the highlighted portion. Drink, and I will give thy camel's drink. Go ahead. I'm going to explain that. Go also, ahead. let the same beast she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac, and hereby and thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness. Read that highlighted part again. Show kindness unto my master. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold, Rebecca, Rebecca came out who was born to Bethel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham. Abraham's brother with her picture upon the shoulder. What kills you young ladies more than anything is your mouth. What kills you more than anything is your mouth. And especially you of marrying age. Because what happens is that you don't know what blessings can be coming your way. He says right here, drink and I will give thy camels drink. Show kindness. You don't know what blessings you can have coming up, but you running your mouth acting like a black woman. Now that's just wrong, man. Because white women do it too. That's just wrong. Nah, 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 nah. Nah, 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 nah. That hardiness spirit. And you don't know the blessings that could be right around the corner. And I'm saying black women because I'm not talking about Edomites. I'm talking about God's chosen seed. God, the Most High's chosen people. Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, same thing. Just a different shade. Father can be setting up something for you right now. And you just cursed it. Because you're not going to say, come and... Get and I'll give your camels drink and you drink too. I gotta get this and I gotta get back home. I gotta get you and your camel I gotta get you and your camel water. I ain't your maid servant. The moment you start talking like that is the moment you are cut off from the most high. Period. Your blessings are shot. But let's see how a calmly woman in the Most High responds. Genesis 24, verse 17 to 22. Read. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. So he ran to her and said, Let me have a little water. Read. And she said, Drink, my Lord. And she hasted. She said, Drink, my Lord. She don't know who he is. She said, drink my Lord, and she hasted. You know what hasted means? Anybody? She did yeah. it quickly. She did it quickly. She didn't sit up there and say, I'm tired. <laughs> she didn't have no attitude. She did it quickly. Read. And let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. Gave him some water. Go ahead. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also. What did he ask for? He asked that somebody come to him and say, I'll give you drink and your camels drink. Mm -hmm. He said, Lord, if she says that, then she's the one. Mm -hmm. So she was humble enough to say, you know what? You're thirsty. I bet your camels are thirsty too. She didn't say, well, I ain't getting them camels nothing to drink. They got humps. <laughs> they, they don't need water all the time. Why are you asking me to give them water? They don't need water. Camels need drink just a little sip. I'm sure you got that from the next, from the time previous. Wow. You see how you mess up your blessing? Well, that goes not only with that, but think about the young girls that's not of married age, but their parents say, do this and do this. 
Same you just thing. told me to do this. Now Same you telling me to do that. You cut your and blessings this, yeah. off by being nasty. You Let's have. continue to read. Until they have done drinking. And she didn't say, just here, take a little sip because I got to go. <laughs> she stayed there and waited. And camels can drink a lot of water. Mm -hmm. Let me just put that out there. She could have been there for, for some hours while they're filling up, drinking their fill. Because camels can go days mm -hmm. in the desert without drinking water. Read. And she tasted and Again, she hurried up. She didn't make no waste about it. Read. And emptied her pitcher into the trough. <coughs> and ran again unto the well. Wait, read that part again. And ran again. Read that part again. And ran again. And ran again. So she didn't just do it once. She did it a few times. And ran. She's going to be blessed. Read. Unto the well to draw water, and drew for all his camels. Mm -hmm. And the man wandering at her held, held his peace. So the man knew, okay, this is the one. She's the one that's going to be blessed. But he didn't let her know that right then and there. See, when you do an act of kindness for somebody, they're not going to immediately say that they're from the most high. And No, he's going to hold his peace because he wants to see what else can transpire? Mm -hmm. Read. To wit, whether the Most High had made his journey prosperous or not. Uh huh. And it came to pass, as the camels had done drinking, that the man took the, a golden earring of half a shackle weight and two bracelets <coughs> for her hands of ten shackles weight of gold. Wow, she got jewelry. She got, she got blessed. He didn't tell her, oh, guess what? You're going to marry Isaac, and you're going to board two nations that's going to come out of you. He didn't tell her all that. He just gave her a shackle of uh, a golden earrings, a half a shekel in weight. That's a half a pound. That's a big golden earring. And two bracelets in her hand and ten shackles weights of gold, ten pounds of gold. That's a lot for watering camels. But she wasn't expecting anything. She wasn't expecting anything. But she did it, and she did not delay. She, it says that she hasted, and she ran water again. So she did it several times. Mm. Let me tell y'all y'all husband. This is what I'm saying. Oh By running your mouth, you miss out on whomever the Most High has planned for you. Not you two. You're kind of young. You're talking about the ones that's of marrying age. Right. Let me tell y'all, Mr. But you can miss out on your blessing, too. Yes. So while you say, ha ha, Brandy, her, you can miss out on your blessing, too. There's no conceit up here. No, 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 no. If you, if somebody says that, if somebody has gives you something that you need to do, I want you to go and I want you to put those cups in the dishwasher. And you sit up there, well, I want to watch whatever you want to watch. I don't feel like doing it right now. You just lost your blessing too. Yeah. Instead of saying, oh, well, I'm not of married age, so it don't matter. You just lost your blessing too. Because you are going to marry someday. When you're older. So if you don't start doing things right now, then who knows what the Most High has for you later. But concentrate on second grade. <laughs> the book of Jasher, chapter 26, verse 1 through 4. And in the 59th year of the life of Isaac, son of Abraham, Rebekah, wife, was still barren. So they're married now. Rebekah passed the test. She's a righteous woman, and she gets to marry Isaac, son of Abraham. Verse 2, Rebekah has said unto Isaac, Truly I have heard, my Lord, that thy mother Sarah was barren in her days until my Lord Abraham so she's still calling them my Lord. Respect. 
Now, I'm not saying you go around calling people my Lord, but she was showing respect. respect yeah. You don't say that nigga. That nigga. That's no good. Uh, that no good blank blank. No. That lazy. By not showing any respect, then you just foul mouth. Yeah. You're just like the woman in Proverbs, the 16th chapter. The Haughtiness. Um, <laughs> where was it? Verse 3. Now, therefore, stand up, pray thou also to the Most High, that he will hear thy prayer and remember us through his mercy. And Isaac answered his wife, saying, Abraham has already prayed for me to the Most High to multiply my city. Now, therefore, this barrenness must proceed to us from thee. What is he saying? I bind you, spirit of barrenness, out of my wife. That's what, he, that's what Isaac is saying. He said, you know what? He said, you know what? Abraham is already paid. Now I'm going to take control. Okay? I'm not barren. The Most High's promise to Isaac. Okay? Now remember, Abraham is still alive. He's like, oh, Sarah's been dead for a while. Genesis chapter 26, verse 1 through 5, read. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was the first, that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Ger. 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 Read. And the Most High appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. So the Most High said, You know what? <laughs> I didn't been down this road with Abraham. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to tell Isaac, don't go to Egypt. So if the Most High tells you don't go somewhere, don't go. Read. To join in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed I will give thee all of these countries. And Read. And I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham my father. So this is what he said to Abraham. This is what he said to Isaac. Read verse four. And I will make thee, I will make thy seed unto multiply as the stars of heaven. I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. Read. And will give unto thy seed all these countries. Seed all the countries. Read. And in thy seed. Shall all the nations all the nations be blessed? Verse five. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge. Abraham obeyed my voice. Read. And kept my charge. Kept my charge. Follow me. Read. My commandments. Kept my commandments. All ten of them. Read. My statutes. All statutes. Read. And my laws. All law, my laws. All whatever, how many of them there are. He did that. So because Abraham did it, you're going to be blessed. Right? So there's a three-part promise to Isaac. The first, number one, his seed would be innumerable, meaning that you can't put a number on his seed. Look at these 12 tribes right here. How many black people in the world? How many people from Jamaica? How many Haitians? How many people from Puerto Rico? How many people from Cuba? How many people from the Dominican Republic? Mm -hmm. How many people from Guatemala, mm -hmm. Panamania? How many Indians? Mm -hmm. Not Indians with the dot, but uh, Native American Indians. How many Seminole Indians? Mm -hmm. How many people from Colombia? Mm -hmm. We know it's a lot of Mexicans. Oh, I only just, know one person. And how many people from Argent, well, from Hawaii and Samoa? A lot. A lot. Number two, his seed would possess this land. That's, That's going to come real. later when we talk about the Exodus. Go on, yes, you're real. Go on, yes, you're <laughs> Number three, in his seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Every nation on this earth that we go to is blessed. 
either through slavery or through other means. Now that makes you wonder why people don't have more businesses. Because it said everything we touch grows. So why people don't have more businesses? Right. Why do we, yeah. The Most High established his covenant with Isaac because of his father Abraham obeyed and followed the Most High. Through him comes the lineage that produced Yeshua Christ. This included Gentile bloodlines. Okay? And it does. When in the bloodline of Christ, there is a Moabite, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Ruth. She was a Moabite, yeah? She was a Moabite. She, gave she was a Gentile. To, and she gave birth to... Mm -hmm. A bed. And a bed gave birth to... A bed didn't give birth to nobody. No, a bed didn't because he's a guy. <laughs> anyway, that's throwing me off topic. A bed? So, there they go. Jacob and Esau. Two different shades. Yes. They're called eternal twins. No, they are. Jacob was dark. Esau was light. Red, rather. Let's get it. Oh, that's ja that's um, Jacob's name in um, Hebrew. In Genesis chapter 25, verse 21 and 22. We're almost done. And Isaac entreated the Most High for his wife because she was barren. And the Most High was entreated of him. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Most High. So she had a hard pregnancy. She had two babies inside of her. And these two babies were fighting. Mm. Inside? Inside her. What? It says it right there. And the children struggled together within her. Well, they had to be in the same sex. Right. They were twins. All they twins. were fraternal twins. Yes, all twins not in the same sex. So they were fighting inside her womb. Yes. Um... Both of our two brothers are having twins because this is their first time getting one girl pregnant. This is their first time even getting anybody pregnant. So they have, they're both having twins. Oh, that's wonderful. Wow. Wow. More to the family, right? So yeah. All right. <laughs> Me, what that scripture means is that the Most High has blessed me. She said, why am I having trouble with this pregnancy? If the Most High has blessed me, she was, remember, she, didn't, she was barren, meaning she couldn't have children. So the Most High blessed, blessed her with two children. So she said, if the Most High has blessed me, why am I having trouble with this pregnancy? Why are these babies fighting inside of me? She don't know that they're going to be fighting for the next two, three thousand years. Uh, Genesis 25, 23. And the Most High said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowl. Bows. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Right. So two nations are inside of you right now, Rebecca. And there's going to be two different people. One's going to be stronger than the other one, but the younger one is going to serve the older. I'm sorry, the older is going to serve the younger. I'm going to explain what that is in a moment. We're going to talk a little about Esau in a moment. So notice that the Most High says two nations are in the womb, meaning these two boys will be fathers of two different nations. We're going to have the nation of Esau, I'm sorry, the nation of Edom, which comes from Esau, and we're going to have the nation of Israel, which comes from Jacob. Mm -hmm. Okay? Verse 24, read. And when her deeds to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. So, her day, she started, you know, turning nine months, eating the salami, well, not salami, eating the um, sardines and, bo not bologna, eating, like, all kinds of stuff. Disgusting stuff. Yeah. 
like peanut butter and fish. You have cravings for it though. They, they do. Not me. Some ladies, they said that um, a lady that um, couldn't have kids, her cravings, she didn't know that she was having a kid, but she started having cravings for eating chalk and sand. All right, so not identical twins, but they're fraternal twins. Remember, they're two different children. Okay, so fraternal twins are different than identical twins. Identical twins, they look exactly alike. Fraternal twins means that there are two children in there, but they look different. Verse 25. And the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. So he came out red with all kinds of hair on him. Okay. So notice that the notice it mentions the firstborn, the elder child's color, because he was different from his mother and father. Get Genesis two seven. So he was different from his mother and father. When Esau was born, he didn't look like his mother and father or any of the other people from Adam. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, read. And the Most High formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Do we have to take a field trip to see what dust looks like? No. What color is dust? I mean, I think brown. Genesis 16, 11, I said red. It could be kind of a yellowish color. Yeah, this is like the original dirt is like dark red. Mississippi. The, the dirt is red. But the ground is pretty much brown. Okay. Esau is red in color. And the blood shows through in his skin. And he's he's a hairy people. Okay? So Esau was red. Everybody else was brown. Kind of looked like what in the world? What was you doing, Rebecca? <laughs> Even though she wasn't doing anything. Genesis chapter twenty-five, verse twenty-six. And after that came his brother out, and his skin was white. Hold of Esau's heel. Read. And his name was called Jacob, and Isaac was threescore years old when she bare them. Those who were here last week, what is threescore? Um, Sixty. Sixty. Okay. Now, notice, Jacob's color wasn't mentioned, right? Uh -huh. It's because he looked like everybody else. Right. <coughs> Bless you. Right? He looked like his mother and father. He looked like all the people on the earth. That's why Jacob's color wasn't mentioned. Esau's color was mentioned because he was different. Genesis chapter 25, verse 27 through 30. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he did, did eat of his very finished. Now fathers are going to love whoever gives us food. And he, venison is dear, dear me. You know what? We saw how to gut a deer. Oh, yeah. You all We're going to have to show you that video on how to gut a deer. Catch it, gut it. Breathe. But Rebecca loved Jacob, and Jacob saw a pot, pot, pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was he. His name called That's how, that's where we get Edom from. Red. It's, uh, it's a set of triplets that live over here somewhere. And they, I saw them yesterday and they blew my mind. Their skin is red. Their hair is red. They're red with big curly red, red hair, red skin. I have never seen none like that before in my life. Oh. Let me take a picture of them next time I see them. Right. They look fake. That's yeah, they don't look real. Okay, so the word eater means red. What do some black people call Caucasians down south? Rednecks. Uh -huh. But it's not just their neck is red, it's the whole top. 
So you ever see those people, they're like red? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Esau gave up his birthright for some red, rare meat inside the pottage. Okay? Gave it up. Jubilees chapter 19, verse 14 through 22. And of and the youths grew, and Jacob learned to write, but Esau did not learn, for he was a man of the field and hunter, and he lent war, and his deeds were fierce. So East, Jacob started to learn how to write. Esau, he didn't care about learning how to write. Oh, that's such a scam, because now in the world, the powers that be try to act like that. Jacob people, like we're all dumb we're and dumb right. and Esau people know everything and go to Harvard, go to the best school. Exactly. But Even that's a lie. <laughs> right. So verse 15, um, Esau was a man of the field, a hunter, and linked war, and all his deeds were fierce. And Abraham loved Jacob, but Isaac loved Esau. Abraham saw the deeds of Esau. And he knew that in Jacob should his name and the seed be called. And he called Rebekah and gave a commandment regarding Jacob. For he knew that she too loved Jacob more than Esau. And he said unto her, this is Abraham talking to Rebekah. My daughter, watch over my son Jacob. For he shall be in my steed on the earth, and for a blessing in the midst of the children of men, and the glory of the whole seed of Shem. This is what Abraham is telling Rebekah about Jacob, not Esau. Verse 18, For I know that the Most High will choose him to be a people for possession unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. And behold, Isaac, my son, loved Esau more than Jacob. But I see that thou truly love Jacob. Verse 20. Add still further to thy kindness to him, and let thine eyes be upon him in love, for he shall be a blessing unto us on the earth from henceforth all generations on of the earth. Verse 21, let thy hands be strong and let thy heart rejoice in thy son Jacob. For I have loved him far beyond all my sons. Mm -hmm. This is Abraham talking. Now Abraham had a few sons. He had a lot of sons. After Ishmael and Isaac, he got married again. After Sarah died. After Sarah died. He got married again and had sons with Catharda, I think her name was. He shall be blessed forever, and his seed shall fill the whole earth. Verse 22. If a man can number the sand of the earth, his seed all shall sell be numbered. So he's going to have a lot of kids, basically. The book of Jasher contains something interesting and a detailed account about the strange birth of Esau and Jacob. Ancient rabbinic Hebrew texts. We read that Rebekah was barren after 19 years of marriage. Deeply concerned, she asked her husband to ask the Lord, even as Abraham had done for Sarah, who had been barren for many years. So the book of Jasher, chapter 26, verse 9 through 12, and in about seven months after the children struggled together within her, and it pained her greatly that she was wearied on account of them. And she said to all the women who were then in the land, Did such a thing happen to you as it happened to me? And they said unto her, No. So she's asking, Hey, I'm pregnant with these two boys, or these two whatever. Did this happen to you? And all of them are saying no. Verse 10. And she said unto them, Why am I alone in this amongst all the women upon the earth? And she went to the land of Moriah to seek the Most High on this, on account of this. And she went to Shem and Eber, his son, to make inquiries of them in this manner. 
Now, Shem is very, very old. He's like about 600 years old at this time. Mm -hmm. Eber was probably about four to 500 years at this time. And that they should seek the Most High in this thing, respecting her. So she had enough sense to go to the elders. I mean, they were pretty elderly. elderly but they were very elder. They were very old. Verse 11. And she asked Abraham to inquire. So she's asking Shem, Abra, and Abraham. All of them are very, she's going to the elders, which is what she yeah, should very do. Wise. Mm -hmm. Very wise. Correct. Verse 12, and they all inquired of the Most High concerning this matter. And they brought her word from the Most High and told her, Two children are in thy womb, and the two nations shall rise from them. The one nation shall be stronger than the other, and the greater shall serve the younger. So she, That's where she got her information from. So she didn't know she was having twins until they said this. Right. Mm, so she had to deal with that in and right. that. So she got the advice from Shem, Eber, and Abraham. They went to the Most High. The Most High told them on what it was, and they told her. Decent and in order. She went to the elders, that's right. Jasher chapter 27, verse 2 through 8. Now we're going to talk about Esau. Nimrod, the king of Babel, yet Nimrod was still alive. The same, the same as Arphel, also frequently went with his mighty men to hunt in the field and to walk about with his men in the cool of the day. And Nimrod, we're about to change, we're about to change from Nimrod being the Babylonian whatever, it's about to switch to Esau now. And Nimrod was observing Esau all the days, for a jealousy was formed in the heart of Nimrod against Esau. Nimrod was old, just like Shem and Ham, probably about four, about 400 years old. Mm -hmm. And he saw Esau, this young buck. And he's like, look at this young buck. Can I beat him? <laughs> Verse 4. On, the, on a certain day, Esau went to the field to hunt and found Nimrod walking in the wilderness with his two men. And all his mighty men and his people were with him in the wilderness, but they removed at a distance from him. And they went from him in different directions to hunt. Esau concealed himself from Nimrod and lurked for him in the wilderness. And Nimrod and his men that were with him did not know him, and Nimrod and his men frequently walked about the field in the cool of the day. So they couldn't see um, Esau because he was probably with camouflage. You know, the camouflage gear that you set up against a tree and nobody can see you. That's probably what Esau was doing. Verse 7, And Nimrod and his two men that were with him came to the place where they were, and Esau started suddenly from his lurking place and drew his sword and hastened and ran and cut off Nimrod's head. Mm. That's how Nimrod evil. died. Evil for evil. And Esau brought a desperate flight and the two men that were with Nimrod, and they called unto him. Esau turned and smote them to death with the sword. Mm. So Esau not only killed Nimrod, but he killed the two men that were with Nimrod. Esau is the current white man today. The Caucasoids. The Caucasoids. Let's talk about Jake Isaac blesses Jacob. Okay. In the times of the old, in the Old Testament, when the father was still alive, he would bless the children. Okay, before he died. Typically, the older would get two portions of a blessing. The younger would just get like a half a portion. So, Rebecca knew that if Isaac blessed Esau, it would be trouble. So, she made it where Jacob would put on stuff to smell and look like Esau because Isaac was old. 
and Isaac blessed Jacob. Let's get Genesis chapter 27, verse 27 to 29. And he came near and kissed him, and he smelled the smell of his ring. So he smelled Jacob, and Jacob had these skins and stuff on him to be hairy like Esau. Read. And blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is the smell of the field which the Most High has blessed. Now here's the blessing. Read. Therefore the Most High give thee of the dew of heaven, and the fatness of the earth, and plenty of corn and wine. Uh -huh. Let people serve thee, and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren. Be Lord over thy brethren. Be Lord over Esau. Read. And let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Let all the mother's sons. She only had two. Jacob and Esau. Read. Curse be everyone that curseth thee, and blessed be he that blesseth thee. Esau cursed Jacob. We're going to see that. That's Esau. <laughs> That's when he came back to the field. And he saw that. That's one ugly picture. He saw that, okay, my blessing is gone. Jasher chapter 29, verse 12 through 16. And when Esau saw that Jacob had fled and escaped from him, that Jacob had cunningly obtained the blessing, then Esau grieved exceedingly. He started wailing and crying. He, and he also was vexed at his father and mother. So he was extremely angry at, at, at Isaac and Rebekah. He rose up and took a wife and went away from his father and mother to the land of Seir and dwelt there. And Esau saw women amongst the daughters of Heth, whose name was Basmath, and the daughter of Elon, the Hittite. So basically Esau started doing what Isaac told him not to do. He started marrying women outside of the Israelites. Israel. Verse 13, And Esau dwelt in the land of Seir six months without seeing his mother and father. He took all kinds of wives. Mm -hmm. He started doing stuff that Isaac told him not to do. Rebellion. You're not going to bless me? Then I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Verse 14, And the wives of Esau vexed and provoked Isaac and Rebekah. So now you marrying these women, and now the women are, are, are vexing Isaac and Rebekah. They're cursing them and doing everything to them. With their works, for they walked not in the ways of the Most High, but served their father gods of wood and stone. Once again, they, remember when I was talking about the wood and the stone serving them? That's what they were doing. And their father taught them, and they were more wicked than their father. And they went out according to evil desires of their hearts, and they sacrificed burnt incense to Belia, which is Satan. And Isaac and Rebekah grew tired of them. And Rebekah said, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob take a wife of the daughters of Heth, if these daughters of the land, what good is there my life unto me? So Rebekah was saying, Esau ran marrying all these wild and crazy women. If Jacob do the same thing, I'm just not going to be no more good. We're going to talk about Abraham's last words to Isaac before he gave up the ghost or died. It's in the book of Jubilees, chapter 21, verse 21 through 26. This is what Abraham told Isaac before he died. I see, my son, that all the works of the children of men are sin and wickedness. Now remember, he's talking about Esau. Jacob is already gone. Not gone dead, but gone left. All their deeds are uncleanliness and an abomination and a pollution. There is no righteous with them. Beware. Lest thou should walk in their ways, and tread their paths, 
and sin a sin unto death before the Most High God, else he will hide his face from thee, and give thee back unto the hands of thy transgression, and root out and root thee out of the land, and thy seed likewise from the heaven, and thy name, and thy seed will perish from the whole earth. He's basically telling Isaac, watch your kids. Don't let them go and follow the ways of Satan. Let them follow the ways of the Most High. Turn away from all their deeds and all their uncleanliness. Now I, Abraham is talking about if you have a son that's in sin, turn away from him. And observe the ordinance of the Most High God. Do this do and do his will and be upright in all things. You can't be upright if you have some somebody who's not serving the most high. Mm -hmm. You're partaking in their sin. Verse 24, and he will bless thee in all thy deeds, and he will raise up thee and plant righteousness throughout the earth, throughout all generations of the earth. And my name and thy name will be not forgotten under heaven forever. Verse 25, go, my son, in peace. May the Most High God, my God, and thy God strengthen thee and do his will. And may he bless all the seed, thy seed, and the residue of thy seed for generations forever with all righteousness blessings. Righteous blessings. That thou mayest be blessed all of the earth. And he went out from him rejoiced. Abraham gave up the ghost. Now we're going to talk about briefly about Jacob's children because this is leading into next week. Jubilees chapter 31, verse 6 to 12. We're going to talk about Jacob. I'm sorry, we're going to talk about um Judah, and we're going to talk about Levi, really brief. And Rebekah came forth from the tower to the front to kiss Jacob and embrace him, for her spirit had revived when she heard, Behold, my Jacob, my son, has come, and she kissed him. So Jacob was out. We're going to talk about that next week. And he brought back his family, his 12 sons, his three wives. Okay. Verse 7. And she saw his two sons and recognized them and said unto him, Are these thy sons, my son? And she embraced them and kissed them and said unto them, saying, And you shall be the seed of Abraham, become illustrious, and ye shall prove a blessing on the earth. And Jacob went into Isaac his father the, to the chamber where he had laid, and his two sons were with him. And he took the hand of his father, stooping down, and kissed him. And Isaac clung to the neck of Jacob his son, and wept on his neck. In the darkness left the eyes of Jacob. He was blind, or he was partially blind. He was blind, but he got his sight back. Mm -hmm. And saw his two sons of Jacob. Levi and Judah. Levi are who today? Patience. Patience. Jacob, uh, Judah is who? African American. So called. Mm -hmm. And he said, Are these thy sons, my son? For they are like thee. They are like thee. They were dark. And he said unto them that they are truly his sons. And thou hast seen that they are truly my sons. Verse 11. And they came to him and turned and kissed them and embraced them both together. And the spirit of prophecy came down to his mouth. And he took Levi by the right hand and Judah by the left. And he turned to Levi first and began to bless him and said unto him, May the Most High of all, the very Lord of all the ages, bless thee and thy children throughout the ages. And the Most High give to thee the seed of greatness to glory, and the 
cause the seed of thy seed, and cause thee of thy seed among all the flesh to approach him and to serve in the sanctuary as the angels of the presence of the holy ones, even as they shall the seed of thy son be for glory and greatness. There's a reason why he's blessing Levi and Judah only. Jubilees 31, 15 through 16. And holiness he may make them a great, make them great unto all the ages. And, and they shall be judges and princes and chiefs of all the seeds of Jacob. Amen. He shall speak a word unto the most high in righteousness, and they shall judge all his judgments in righteousness. And they shall declare my ways to Jacob and to the paths to Israel. To the blessing of the Lord shall be given in their mouths to bless all the seed of the beloved. Thy mother has called thy name Levi, and justly she has called thy name. Thou shalt be joined to the Lord and be a companion to all the sons of Jacob. Let his table be thine, and let thou and thy sons eat thereof. And may thy table be full unto, the gen unto all generations, and thy food fail not unto all the ages. So that was her blessing, Levi. Levi. And let and let all who hate thee fall down before thee, and let all thy adversaries be rooted out and perish. And blessed be he that blesses thee, and cursed be every nation that curse thee. And to Judah he said, May the Lord give thee strength and power, and tread down all the hate, all that hate thee. A prince thou shalt be, thou shalt one of thy sons over the sons of Jacob. That's talking about the Christ. May thy name and thy name of thy sons go forth and traverse every land and region. Then shall the Gentiles fear before thy face. We're going to talk about that next week. And all the nations shall quake. In thee shall be the help of Jacob and in thee shall be found salvation in Israel. Once again, the Levites were the priests. Mm -hmm. the, tr the tribe of Judah were the kings, and that's where Yeshia came from. Mm -hmm. and verse 20, And when thou sittest on the throne of honor in thy righteousness, there shall be great peace for all the seed of the sons of the beloved. Now, this is where Jubil this is where I uh, Levi gets blessed and becomes high priest. Jubilees chapter thirty two verse one through five. And he and we're almost done. And he abode that night at Bethel. And Levi dreamed that they had ordained and made him the priest of the Most High God, him and his sons forever. And he awoke from his sleep and blessed the Lord. And Jacob rose early in the morning on the 14th of this month and gave a tithe of all that it came with him unto the men, cattle, both gold and every vessel and garment. So Jacob was the first to tithe to Levi. Verse 3. Yea, he gave a tithe of all, and in those days Rachel had become pregnant with her son Benjamin, who are what? Jamaicans. And Jacob counted his sons from him upwards, and Levi fell, and Levi fell to the portion of the Most High, as his father clothed him in the garments of priesthood and filled his hands. And on the fifteenth of this month he brought unto the altar fourteen oxen among the cattle, and twenty-eight rams, and forty-nine sheep and seven lambs and 21 kids of wow. goats for a burnt offering. That's a lot of animals. Our people was rich. We had a lot. 
burnt offering to the sacrifice well pleased the sweet Savior before the Most High. This was offering in, some, in consequence of the vow which he had vowed that he would give a tenth of the fruit offerings and the drink offerings. Fruit offerings and drink offering that goes into tithing. So, the patriarchs of Israel, Abraham, soaring faith, Isaac, wing faith, Jacob, clean faith, and next week, Joseph, unfavoring faith, unwavering faith. So that is it. That's the teaching for Jacob, for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We give all praises to the Most High, Ahaya Shah Ahaya, and.